I had some tree limbs removed yesterday and they fell on some of my flowering plants. So I went ahead and um, cut the plants down to the breaking point. They will uh, flower again. And I'm harvesting the leaves and the stalks. Uh, I'm going to do a little experiment with them that I will talk about. I had to wash the plants this morning because they it rained after they fell down and they got dirty. I don't always wash the leaves that I harvest, but in this case I had no choice. Um, I'm not too worried about a little bit of insect damage on these because they're going to be going into very high-proof alcohol. Once the leaves are just a little wilted, I uh, bundle them up and I use a slip knot at the top. I hang them in a dark place in my house. Um, the reason I use a slip knot is that as these leaves dehydrate, uh, the stalks are going to get thinner, and the the where I tied it at the top can get a little loose. So because it's a slip knot, I'm able to tighten it up as they start to dehydrate. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing with the stalks. This is what I do for stalks that are really thick for tea. I split them lengthwise, and then I cut them with these cutters into fairly small pieces. Um, what I'm going to be doing with these is an experiment with 70% um, alcohol and 30% water, which is what I've seen in an awful lot of studies on um, the susquitine lerp, sus, susquiterpene lactones that are in these, the lactucan and the lactocoprican. Um, I like to do that, and I recommend doing that when you are working with a plant like I would put a search term in Google that says Lactuca Varosa study ethanol. And then I can find a lot of the studies that extract uh, in the lab using ethanol, which is of course just alcohol. Um, so I've seen a lot of studies that use 70% ethanol and 30% water. So I'll be using either spring or distilled water because I don't like to have chlorine or chloramine. Um, in my tinctures, and then I'll be using, the rest will be Everclear. Um, these stalks over here, I'm going to be cutting up soon, but when I pulled the leaves off, some of the latex was coming out, and I don't like to cut them up when they're actively flowing because they get pretty gummy. So those are going to sit there for a couple hours, and I will cut them up, and I'll be throwing them on the screen for a little while until they don't seem to be wet anymore, and then I will put them in a cardboard box to finish drying. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is you'll see a lot of people, of course, call this opium lettuce, and people will talk about how it hits opiate receptors. There has been nothing that has confirmed that in any studies. In fact, there are studies that show that the only, there's only one alkaloid in these plants, and it doesn't hit opiate receptors. It hits muscarin receptors. Um, hycosamine, I'm not sure. It's an HY a word that starts with HY. It's often prescribed for stomach complaints. It has shown to have slight sedative properties. The amount in these plants is minimal. I mean, tiny. <laughs> I don't even think it's 2%. Um, so th there are a lot of people that think these, these are, are mild opiates, and it's simply not true. There's absolutely no evidence for that. And I've been prescribed opiates for my herniated disc, and... Um, I don't feel that sort of effect with these. I'm going to go over here in the shade because my phone is getting hot. Um, if anyone is interested in using a plant that hits opiate receptors, Kratom will do that. Kratom, I think, weakly binds to them. Um, that is a powerful pain reliever. That is the most powerful pain reliever that's herbal that I use. I don't use it often because it's been shown to have addictive properties. It also, you develop a tolerance to it very rapidly, so if you use it every day, you're going to need more as time goes on. But there are people who have gotten over opiate addictions using Kratom. Um, I sort of use three levels of pain reliever when it comes to herbals. I use um, CBD oil every day, and that helps with keeping the inflammation in my back in check. I will use wild lettuce in the form of the dried latex, the lacticarium, for the next level on top of the CBD oil. If I'm feeling even worse, then I'll go to Skullcap, and I like to combine that with wild lettuce in a tea. Um, I have another video that talks about a study that shows that um, 
the elements in lacticarium they have been shown to potentiate they bind with the GABA A receptor and they've been shown to potentiate benzodiazepines because that is the site of the GABA A receptor that they bind to so um, skullcap also binds to the benzodiazepine receptor uh, so does valerian I have not tried to potentiate um, valerian root with wild lettuce uh, I find it strong enough on its own I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. This is what the buds look like at the top of the plant when they just begin to form. I'm going to throw a picture of that in the video as well. And eventually they spread out. They grow taller and all those little buds sort of separate. And a friend of mine who lives in Buenos Aires, I had posted a picture of my plants to Facebook. She said, oh, we eat those throughout the growing life cycle, no matter how bitter they become, and we stir fry the buds when they're compact like that, and they're delicious. And so I have a lot of small plants that I use for tea, and this year I, I uh, cut the stalks on a lot of them right at this point. And I stir fried eight or nine of these things, and they were fantastic. I really, really enjoyed them. I think next year, I'm going to attempt to pickle some of them. So um, that's just a tip in case you want to try it.